just when you think that well water is the safest, the purest, ugh. So what kinds of things are we see leaching into the groundwater? Well, there's a, a whole host of things that are collectively known as emerging contaminants or contaminants of emerging concern, and that's basically just because they're things we haven't regulated before. So this includes pharmaceuticals, the drugs that we take either over the counter or prescription drugs, uh, household chemicals like cleaners, also our cosmetics and shampoos, um, and then personal care products, uh, the, the shampoos, mm -hmm. the medicine, uh, the makeup we were just talking about, also things uh, like components of our furniture, flame retardants, um, and things that make uh, our pots and pans nonstick are some of the things that we're finding in our really? drinking water wells. So what were they measuring? How did they, how did they go around and do this? Well, so Silent in the Spring in, Institute. Right. The Silent Spring Institute researchers have really been looking at this problem from a number of different angles for a number of years. The most recent study, uh, they went around to 20 different public drinking water wells on Cape Cod. They took water samples and then tested for very small levels of these contaminants. So really what makes them emerging contaminants is not so much that the chemicals themselves are new, but that our ability to detect them um, is new. And uh, they've previously done this with private drinking water wells as well, mm -hmm. and also with groundwater and ponds on the Cape. So really putting together this comprehensive picture, and we're seeing these chemicals showing up everywhere. So mm -hmm. in 15 out of the 20 public drinking water wells, uh, in the majority of ponds, the majority of private wells as well. So the conclusion is, I guess, that it's, it's leaching out of these septic fields. Right. So what's happening is we're taking these medicines or we're using the products on ourselves or they're in our homes um, through washing dishes, washing our laundry, washing ourselves. Outdoor showers. Outdoor showers <laughs> could be part of it. These things are making their way into our wastewater, yeah. into the septic systems, and from there they leach into the groundwater. Um, and Cape Cod is particularly susceptible because we have very porous, sandy soil. Yeah. Uh, this leaches right into our groundwater, and then that groundwater is on Cape Cod, the source of our drinking water as well. And I mean, big reservoirs and that kind of thing aren't necessarily home free either. Are they? Well, no. So the Cape is particularly susceptible because so many people have septic systems. And as I said, because of the geology of the Cape and the fact that we're this sole source aquifer where we're getting all of our drinking water from the same place that we're mm. putting all of our wastewater into the groundwater. But this is a problem over the past 10 or so years that research around the country has been showing. Uh, we can see these sorts of contaminants in streams and ponds everywhere. Um, in fact, Silent Spring has done a comparison and sees similar levels of emerging contaminants coming out of sewage treatment plants as they do coming out of septic systems, so that doesn't necessarily take care of the problem. And some sewage research treatment does not take care of the does problem. Does not yeah. take not really what sewage treatment and septic systems have been designed to do is take care of uh, possibly infectious um, agents uh, and in the case of Title V on the Cape to really deal with the nutrient pollution mm -hmm. issue. They're just not designed necessarily to handle these kinds of well, chemicals. I mean, they had those stringent new rules in 1995. Might they go the next step and say you can't use septic fields and you're going to have to use these buried septic tanks, you know, they're, they're holding tanks, essentially. You know, there's a lot of debate right now on the Cape about what's going to happen, that we do have to do something better than we're, we currently are to deal just with the nutrient loading issue that's affecting our coastal waters. Whether or not that will take into account these emerging contaminants, probably not in the near term. Um, a 2011 report from the National Academy of Engineering listed these emerging contaminants as one of the major uh, challenges facing wastewater and drinking water treatment plants uh, in the foreseeable future because that's not what they've been set up to do and to actually address this problem would be very expensive and very mm -hmm. energy intensive. H have they made any links to health risks? There's, I know there's a, an uptick in breast cancer in the Cape and you know, the, the, the early maturity of, of children, have the endo, endo, endocrinal, you know, yeah, well, association? So many of these emerging contaminants are what we call endocrine disrupting compounds. They have potentially hormone-like um, actions. And there is some concern that even at very low levels, we've sometimes seen impacts on fish that have what's called intersex problems. You're not really sure if it's a male fish or a female fish. Um, but there's nothing really that would be strong evidence in humans. Um, so there's a lot of concern. And, and the reasons for the concern uh, are, are multiple. Um, one is that these are showing up in, in different mixtures, right? It's not just that you're taking ibuprofen for your headache. It's that there might be a very small amount of ibuprofen, but also a small amount of an antibiotic and also a small amount of a detergent. And how do those things mm. interact? Um, you're getting it on a chronic basis from, from drinking water. And there's the fact that there are vulnerable populations out there, babies, pregnant women, people who might have an allergy um, or a reaction to a medication who may be being exposed to these at very low levels without actually knowing it. So there's no proof that 
that there's a human health risk, but I would say that uh, within the scientific community, there's a lot of concern at this point. About Oil it. your water. <laughs> Actually, no, there's some easy things you can yeah. do. A Brita, um, a Brita filter, just one of those charcoal oh, filters, sure, sure, yeah. um, will actually do a on lot to tap, take these yeah. out. Yes, yeah, so you can, you know, one of the ones that sits on your counter, um, they should be at room temperature, but not in your fridge. Um, in the case of those kind of pitcher mm -hmm. filters, you can put a, a filter on your tap. You can even do whole, whole home uh, filtration if you're worried about exposure from when you're taking a shower. Uh, so there are things that can be done just in your house. Good report, Heather. It's kind of creepy to think about. It's certainly not fun. <laughs> All right, thanks.